Hey, everyone. Hi. Hey. Hey, Brandon. Hello. The meeting notes in the chat. So there's a couple of changes we made to the the weekly meeting um, kind of template and stuff like that. So we're gonna see a little bit of that. Uh, one thing that we're trying to get folks to do more is to put in their affiliation when you're writing in your your name in the meeting notes. Um, this is helpful, you know, if folks wanna get in contact or wanna sync up with you if they're interested in chatting or things like that, we want to kind of foster the community a bit more. All right, folks are trickling in. So let's give it a couple of minutes. Paste this in again. Mark and anchor. Morning, Brendan. Morning, hey, Matthew. All right, we'll give a couple more minutes. Look like looks like folks are still trickling in. So let's wait a bit. I posted the um, the meeting notes in the chat. So please fill up your name uh, in the attendance. And if you have a nickname, please make sure you put it in your display name and Sue. Do you have one, Andres? <laughs> It'd, it'd be it'd be shadowed by the one that's on screen. <laughs> I don't know if Zoom lets you change your name without rejoining. So, uh, there's a rename button on the the ellipsis, and you click on that on your name. I don't know. Maybe let me try it. Yeah, you have to do it from the uh, chat screen. Yep, looks like it's uh, it does it does work. I don't think it's persistent though. I'm guessing. Yeah, right, let's wait another minute. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, hey, Brandon. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, let's get started. I'm going to paste the, um, the Google Drive link again, just for those that just joined in. Um, so let me start off with the usual script. Um, so hey, everyone. So quick reminder that the meeting's recorded and it's gonna be uploaded after the meeting. Um, obviously the, the CNCF and the code of conduct applies to these meetings. Uh, we'll need at least one person to volunteer to scribe. If someone can do that, that would be great. Um, and thanks for filling up your names. And if you can, please also add the your affiliation or maybe the companies or communities that you work with. Uh, this helps us kind of get in contact with the right people and kind of form different working groups together. Thanks to Emily for volunteering to start. Cool, so um, before we go ahead, I wanna just go through to see whether we have any new members to do any introductions. Do we have any new members today?
Okay, looks like um, no new members today. Um, thanks, Andreas, as well, for sparring. So one thing that we've added to the weekly meetings is um, a triage, triage section. Um, so what we're going to do is at the start of every weekly meeting, um, there's a working session. We are going to go through a couple of issues and kind of talk a little bit about them, uh, let people know that we are looking at these is issues either to you know, close them or to follow up on them. And so the idea is to give a general overview, some short discussion around them. And then these will be posted to the Slack channel as well to get additional feedback. Um, and for example, if the decision is to make, to close these issues uh, at the end of the week, we will close all these issues. So this is still, this is still very new. So we will see how this turns out. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen quickly. If I can find this the right, spaghetti make notes. Cool. I think I got the right one. Um, I'm gonna paste the the issues that we're looking at today. Um, sorry, I'm gonna paste it in the scrap notes. But so first one that we're gonna kind of take a quick look at is issue six C. Um, scoping and recommendation for compliance and vulnerability elements applied to cloud native infrastructure. Um, the, the whole idea around this issue was kind of to create some, um, some knowledge or some kind of paper around compliance and things like that. Um, so there's some details about, you know, people talking about compliance. Um, there was a draft document and so keep in mind this doc this this issue is from 2018. So there's you know initial things about small recommendations here and there. Um, and talking about what compliance is. But I think that some of the elements of this have already been covered by the white paper. And so um, we want to get some feedback. Um, probably by the next triage cycle, so next week, if there isn't any additional concerns, whether there are other things that are not covered by the scope of this issue, uh, that we will close it in favor of saying that, you know, all these elements are already covered by the white paper. So this is the first issue uh, that we want to look at. So 60. Um, so Wait, before okay. we move on to the next issue, could we just close that and say, if somebody has any, if there's any specific things that aren't covered in the white paper, open another issue or do a direct PR so that we could end up with specific issues. That would be like closing it without, you know, and giving somebody a possible action rather than leaving yeah. it open. Yeah, uh, I think I think what's, um, we wanna just collect all the issues here and then we decide what the, the next- Okay, so you're gonna present is. all the issues and then we're gonna talk about them? Is that what you're? Uh, well, so I, I don't want to limit the discussion just to the meeting. So I kind of want to just shed some light. I'm going to post all these issues as well on the Slack channel. Um, so at the end of this, this section, if we have some time at the end of the 10 minutes, we can talk about some of these specific things. Um, I see. But in general, I want to collect all the comments on the GitHub issues themselves. Um, all right, so this one was opened by uh, Mark Underwood. This was use cases for interoperability. Uh, the idea is to add, add additional um, text to the use cases and personas section to talk about uh, interoperability of certain, um, certain frameworks and certain tools. So this is more of something that was um, proposed. Uh, there really hasn't been uh, that much work being put into it yet. So because this is a very old issue and it's inactive, we will probably close this if there's no interest to further pursue this. And, hard know, to do it too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry, Mark, I missed you. What did you say? Oh, I said too hard to do. <laughs> okay, well, 
if I mean we're we're gonna close it, but obviously, like if 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 this comes up again, and we get we get a bit more, um, um, we get a couple of people that are interested in working on it. You know, we we can open a new issue. You can. Um, I don't know if you want to move it. We could move it over to the public sector stuff because it's germane to that. But I mean, we don't have a separate repo for that. So maybe you just close it and tag it as something to put in the public sector Slack channel. Okay. Can you um, can you do that? Because I'm not sure which Slack channel you're talking about. Or maybe just send me a link to the Slack channel. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. put that here in a second. Just give me a minute. Awesome. Yeah, if this can continue in the space, that that would be great as well. The two issues you've gone over so far, it sounds like there's not enough information to triage because they're open ended and they need more information. Yeah, I, I think that the main thing for these issues is that um, the they they've I either been lost in space and we want to kind of bring them forward again to see whether there are people that are interested. Uh, and working on on them, or uh, interested in discussing them. If not, you know, we we want to kind of clean up the issues a little bit more. Yeah, and I think the the key thing is the, in my opinion, the reason they're not scoped is because we don't have somebody who's passionate about taking it forward um, and doing that work. Like either because you know, the, you know, at any one time we have way more than we could possibly do, you know, towards cloud native security. So. Um, so we tend to prioritize things that people are, are like eager to work on or are specific directive from the technical oversight committee. So these are just, they didn't fall into one of those categories. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm spitballing here, but if, if the issue has been open for three years, would it be fair to say that we no longer have the co context for why it would have been relevant at the time? And maybe we have a rule that issues that have been enacted for two years get automatically closed? Well, that's that's what this um, this thing is about, to just kind of bring it up again, kind of like any last words. If not, we're going to send it away. We're going to bring it to the, to mm -hmm. the fun. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we don't want to just automatically close things because they happen to be old. We want to like have a process where we, we actually collaboratively do something with something <laughs> before we just close it. That's fair. Cool. So can we have a process to automatically flag for possible review of this process? So we, we have a bot that marks the inactive label if um, no activity has been done on the um, issue for more than, I think, 60 days. Um, so that's kind of what um, part of what the triage team is doing, right? It's kind of, they're going to look at all the inactive labels and if it's fairly recent, maybe we'll ping the author of the, the issue and try and get some follow-up. Uh, and if you know we've seen that multiple attempts of follow-ups have been made or this issue is really, really old, then we bring it, we bring it to this discussion to say that um, any takers, if not, if not, we should close this. Um, I hope that's what you were thinking, Frederick. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Sounds like there sounds like the team's already on it. There's we, also another issue, which is an actual review of the triage process. So if it was a question of the review of the process, there's an open issue on that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, I think we have a topic on the agenda to chat about that quickly. OK. So this one, validate personas and use cases. Um, this was kind of being able to get feedback from the CNCF community on the things we've written with the use cases and personas uh, to get more feedback to see whether there are more things that we need to be able to add to them. Um, so th the idea of this was to have a survey um, and to get some feedback on that. Um, yeah, and actually at the time, I'll just add a little color because I wrote this up um, and then I'll stop talking for a little while. Um, so uh, the idea was to get actual user researchers involved in like either interviews or surveys or constructing something that would validate the work product of the group. But then we didn't end up being able to find those people or the people who we found weren't able to you know, follow through. So, um, so yeah, I think that we just don't have the band, we don't have the people for this. 
or haven't historically. If somebody wants to, I think I still think it's a great idea, but um, but yeah, we need the folks to do it. Yeah. So one thing, one quick update on this particular issue um, is actually so, um, Katie, and Katie Minders, I'm guessing I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, actually got in touch with us and they've drafted a survey for cloud native security. Um, so the question is kind of, there is some um, overlap on these things, but not exactly, you know, we're not collecting demographics of, of members in the community and things like that. Um, but yeah, so there is like an ongoing effort. This probably will be created as a separate issue to kind of look at the results from. Um, but yeah, I think if, um, if we don't have any bandwidth for this, we'll probably end up closing this issue. So I, to piggyback off of what Brandon said, so that survey um, has a lot of this information in it to a certain extent. It's collecting role information, not necessarily industry experience, but what industry that they're currently in, um, country, a few other data points, uh, but a lot of the cloud native survey is designed around kind of validating the work that the group is doing and, and understanding whether or not our products that we're outputting are consumable to the community in a manner that they're expecting them to be. So my recommendation would be to close this issue, raise a new one to go through the results of that survey when it becomes available to us and link this issue to the new one to be able to provide that as a product out. Now the keyword is, is validate because we do have defined personas, right? Assessments, make use of those. Uh, when we yeah. wrote the book, at, we took those. At, at the time that this was written, that was the only work product of the group. And the goal was to validate it. And our yeah. group was very small. So we had a lot less bandwidth than we do now and CNCF was less mature. So, so yeah, you're absolutely right. The keyword is validate, not create new product. I mean, except for that the survey is sort of a product, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, presumably it's been, it's been validated. It's been tried and tested since then in, in a number of occasions. Only within our group, not from our audience that is like beyond the group. So yeah, we a... have validated it in that we use it for different, you know, for our assessments and whatnot. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's useful generally to people who are coming to cloud. You know, there's a whole range of people who are not represented within our group. Yeah, and also I think the, the only feedback we get are from those that use it and then come back to us. And we, we don't have a lot of information of, of anyone that uses it, but doesn't necessarily participate actively in the community. Now, do we, do we anticipate there's gonna be like high impact from that? Like what, what would be the return on this product on validation of that product? I think the, the idea would be, do we have to, do we have to refine it or do we have to change it? Or is there something to show we broaden or the scope of the, the use cases and personas? I think the idea is like, should we spend more time investing into it? Um, or do we have to spend more time investing into it? Or is it fine as it is? Uh, that's fair. My God tells me we might be splitting hairs at this point and, and people are, are leveraging it and they're not finding any objections with it. So it's not broken, but sure. Yeah, generally things that are three years old aren't that broken or we would have fixed them by now. So yeah, I think you, you, I, the, I would concur. All right. Sweet. Cool. So I, I think this is kind of, um, the, the idea of this triage section is to kind of go through a couple of issues. I had five lined up, but it seems like I don't want to dive too deep into issues. We still have agenda items today. Um, so Maybe you won't want to throw a DevSecOps person into, into the personas. I'm sorry, Brian, <laughs> wrapping it up. Well, and just, you can create a PR. <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Zero right. trust implementation engineers not captured there. <laughs> yeah, we we got we got to create jobs for ourselves, right? <laughs> That's one way to do it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead with uh, the other follow up um, agenda um, things on the agenda. So 
review of other the the tech meetings, the APEC meetings. Um, do we have anyone that went to that? Oh, I think that was last week, so we shouldn't have any updates this week. So I'm gonna skip that. Um, TOC meeting updates. Matthew, are you there? Hey, yeah. Um, from the TOC meeting the other week, um, I believe Emily was present and uh, handled everything. Uh, S uh, do we call it STAG or STAG, by the way? When we talk to the talk, it's security tag. Security Informally, tag. we can say STAG. Okay. There's a, there's a Harry Potter joke in there, but I'll, that's beneath me. Um, I'll... Uh, so I believe Emily already took care of everything on that front and I took notes slash screen caps of the remaining pieces there, but it's pretty much like a, a wall of text. So if you guys want, I can just go put that in the notes there because otherwise I'd pretty much be sort of rote repeating uh, a dozen or so slides of text. Okay, sounds like just a regular update then. Yeah, I, I don't have anything to really add on that front. Uh, and then I also have a short check-in I'll have to get out of the way in the next 10 minutes before I head out, but that's relating to uh, just two other assessments. So no other updates for me with respect to TOC. Cool. Um, all right. Any updates from um, partner groups? What are partner groups? Um, oh, so like um, pol uh, the policy working group, um, the um, supply chain working group so, but yeah, so i can speak to the yeah. policy working group robert is here as well uh, we started a working session on the uh, white paper that we are working on um, we had an initial meeting and we're meeting again tomorrow to discuss uh, progress and what all we need to cover there awesome thank you All right, I thought let's go to um, supply chain working group. Um, any updates from that? I know. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so for the supply chain working group, we're currently breaking apart our user stories on our Trello board to um, help refine some of the requirements for the reference architecture. We're hoping to have that wrapped up in the next week, week and a half. And then from there, we can start assigning engineers to uh, create some tasks for work. Awesome. Cool. Um, I think that's all we have for now. Um, let's just go to general standups. No, let's see who, whether anyone has an update. Um, Emily have an update, but are you covering that in the agenda or do you want to just do that as an update? So just a quick reminder, not related to the triage discussion on the agenda item for PRs, we actively encourage everybody in the community to review PRs. It helps the security leadership team out um, by having another set of eyes go over everything just to make sure that we're not missing stuff, but also to give us the assurance that indeed somebody else did look at it that is not the author. It makes it easier for us to go ahead and merge content in and make sure that the repo is up to date and relevant. Um, the other update that I have is there's an open issue um, regarding security resources being available to projects that come to us or that are looking for them um, that's posted in the channel. So if you're interested, please comment. That's it. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Um, Pushka, do you have something? It's part of the agenda. So I'll let okay. others speak first. All right, next update is from Matthew. There we go. Uh, so two quick updates. One is with respect to build packs. The uh, I put in my assessment there and I just have to make a copy of it in the Google Doc self-assessment rather than the copy I put in Slack for tracking slash history slash completeness. And I'm just picking uh, Robert right now to see if there's anything proactively we have to sort of drive or push through the pipeline or any sort of gears to set in motion or if that's the onus is on the build pack team or if we should just give them a little heads up and then on cloud custodian we met up with the maintainers a couple days ago uh robert myself emily you and some others 
and uh, just went through essentially some the questions I brought up in my own review, and I put together the joint assessment uh, that uh, Robert's putting up in Google Docs now, and then we just have to schedule, I guess, time to just sort of assign pieces for everyone to populate in that document to, to own. And then from that point, I believe we'll move on to the more hands-on part of the assessment, sort of the, uh, what was it called? The bench top testing, static testing of it. And take it from there. Awesome. Thanks. Hey, Brandon, Thank on that one, I don't know. Uh, I still can't edit that uh, 307 issue. I don't know yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, for now, you have to talk to one of us so, so just i think just ping me on ash okay, and then perfect. we will we will update it for you um we are still trying to figure out what a good way to do it unfortunately there's no way to kind of like delegate permissions easily um so yeah we, we, we are still figuring that out but in the meantime you have to bear, bear with uh, one of us do it for you okay i'll just send you a diff and you can merge it in sounds good Okay, um, let's see, no updates. Andreas, do you have an update? A uh, couple of things. Uh, Matthew, I'll work with you uh, on reaching out to the BuildPacks project lead to have a debrief, make sure there's no discrepancies between our findings, like the ones over they, they gave to your, to your report and we can we can write the capstone report to conclude the assessment. Thanks a lot for, for all your help and getting us over the line. Uh, we straddle a little bit there at the end. Um, besides that, as, as we start to make progress on, on the supply chain working group that Emily's doing a great work, one area that I have a lot of uncertainty around is uh, signing and, and verification and like the state of projects and that. Um, I think the notary V2 group is, is attempting to overhaul their, their governance. So something to, to keep an eye on. Uh, I think the, the folks behind Intoto, the folks behind Six Store are, are trying to uh, structure things in a way that's conducive to work and outcomes. So yeah. Uh, Marina, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I think like the team expects to have uh, some changes uh, occur within the next month or so. But yeah, I just wanted to raise that for visibility and, and awareness. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of potential in, in all of those projects you mentioned to have some solutions in this space, which is pretty exciting. But I think all of them have a little ways to go before, before they're there. Um, you know, so, so that's just kind of the way it is. Um, because like, you know, trying to achieve kind of, you know, a, a, a really well-defined threat model and figuring out what this, what's problem the signatures are solving, I think is a really key step there. That's definitely still kind of an ongoing process. So if anyone's interested in that or wants a particular thing out of signatures from any of these projects, I think this would be a great time for anyone to go and communicate that to folks so that we make sure that whatever the solutions we come up with are, the are solving the right problems, basically. Just to add more color, the like the one project or well, the one effort, I wouldn't call it a project necessarily that people have looked as the candidate for a CNCF or under the CNCF umbrella doesn't have a threat model and doesn't have a whole lot of, of code for it other than proposals. That is notary v2, right? So I think a lot of the a lot of the concerns step from there. But you're attempting to to bridge that gap, right? Yeah, exactly. And try and um, basically by, by defining that stuff better. And so, yeah, the process is definitely going to still take some time. I think that, that's kind of the, the main takeaway, but I think eventually it'll come up with, with something that can that can deal with this as long as we figure out what those goals actually are and what, what the solutions we're solving for are. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Frederick, you, you have your hand up. Do you want to add something? Yeah, it's more of a question. Is there a place where, where, where we have these projects listed or a place where we can keep track of some of the uh, extremely high level things that they're, that they're working on? Because I think it'd be 
one of the problems that, that, I, that I'm seeing within this particular space is that there's a proliferation of different approaches and projects and the, the people working on them are doing an, an, an amazing job inter, uh, working with each other and communicating with each other. But if you have somebody new who's coming in uh, who doesn't understand the, the space, it's, it's incredibly high bar for them to, to even work out where should they focus their time. That's a, that's a good question, Frederick. Um, so I'm gonna do a quick um, pitch for our own <laughs> cognitive security map here. So, so um, and then probably Andrews and Marina can, can add on to this. Um, yeah. We're Perfect. trying to, to kind of consolidate this, not only for like supply chain signing stuff, provenance stuff, as bomb stuff, but in general for all of cloud native. Um, so that's what the IPC link, which is the current build of um, the, the, the cloud native security map. So this, uh, they basically we have all the different projects for the different areas of security. Um, so this is like um, an effort from the tech to do this, um, but I'm not sure whether there, there is also an effort from um, the side of the projects. Is, is there a place I can do a pull request? Yes. I would recommend uh, that this potentially be brought up with the talk at one of the talk meetings as a potential concern area. As, as we identify gaps within the cloud native security ecosystem or cloud native ecosystem proper, understanding what some of these challenges are and which projects are working with which other projects to have them resolved would be beneficial for the larger community to be aware of, at least to know where to go to get involved. The cloud native security map certainly has a lot of that content and can increase the visibility of those gaps, but I think there should be a higher level of visibility for it. Yeah, so I think that one of the one of the next steps, and I think we we have an issue somewhere open, I think probably like a year ago on this. Uh, uh, the plan was to finish off the map and then kind of like evaluate the map and take a look at the gaps there. Um, but there seems to be some kind of other, uh, there seems to be a lot of uh, knowledge that's lying around that I think we, we should kind of uh, take note of. So maybe we'll make that one of the next projects coming up. We'll get a group together to discuss this and bring up some, at least um, first iteration of what some recommendations to the TOC can do. I think you're getting at what the what the ultimate goal is, which is arrive at standardization. We we care about having a, a standard for this format that gets used across the board because there's there's many, many different approaches and, and there's it's a disservice to the community to like make a king out of one that's not complete yet. And well, if we're going to put all hands on deck, because like we think we have the brightest minds with the most experience, like work through all the security aspects, uh, capture it and put this out. And we get we get container D to use it. We use like gatekeeper to be aware of this, and be able to admission control based on on these things. Then we can get to this place where we actually make meaningful use of signatures. So, um, so Frederick, I, I posted in the, the branch that we have all the content. You can make a pull request directly on that to update the map. Um, and yeah, we should continue the signing discussion at some point. Um, we are running a bit tight on time, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward with the agenda a little bit. Okay, so I think the last update we have is uh, Frederick on the security controls. Okay, so short update on that. So um, Alex had taken on the initial setup of the of the group to get us all started. Alex Barbato, I think was uh, how to pronounce it. And so the idea was for the first month that he drives it, uh, we've gone through that. We've had the initial setup, which uh, I think went really well an initial populated spreadsheet. Uh, that spreadsheet is uh, is available for people to view. It should be linked in the Slack. So if you want to take a look at that, they can they can see it. We're moving on to the next phase, which is going to be we'll we'll select a uh, new person to drive the next stage of what's going on. And once we have some uh, scope on 
what the next steps that we want to take on it are, then we're going to start doing call outs for more people to volunteer to participate. So just want to put that status down for the security controls group. Uh, thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Patrick. All right. Um, so let's get to the agenda item today. <laughs> so we have uh, the first one, which is discussing cloud native security uh, survey, survey results. I think this is from the um, the white paper survey, right? Yes. Okay. All right, Pushka and Emily. Go for okay. It. All right. Uh, I'll share my screen. Emily, feel free to interrupt and add col more color to whatever I'm sharing. Uh, and uh, let um, I'm sharing on a bigger screen. So let me know if this is the uh, text is too small for everyone. That's fine. Up a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is go. better. All yeah. right. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So I'll just give some brief context and history behind this. Uh, last year, we published a security white paper with work from many of the people who are in the call and some who are not. As part of that, we got good feedback. Uh, it was shared, we think, uh, across the board everywhere, uh, but we wanted to validate that understanding and see if we are really by re spending so much effort and time on the white paper doing justice to the community and solving things and sharing knowledge that is useful for them. So we, we started tracking that through uh, issue which we called as retrospective and part of that was creating a survey and sharing it across uh, the community with uh, 10 questions that not only are related to white paper, but also about cloud native security in general uh, and see what feedback we are getting. So we published the survey in February, I, I wanna say, and then we closed it early last month. So after that, we started compiling the results. We got good help from CNCF as well. Amy especially helped a lot. And uh, we were finally able to compile the results. There were about 70 plus participants and a PR with some of the details is open. Uh, we also have a new contributor who participated in creating a summary. George, I think is there in the call today. So. Thank you, George, for this. So what I want to do is uh, share the summary and the results and the graph and based, based on that, get feedback from all of you in terms of whether this makes sense, what are the possible next steps we should be working on? Are there any projects coming out of this? What updates would we want to make to the white paper? Who would be interested in all of that? A anything else you would add before we dive deep, Emily? No, um, other than just folks that are really interested in this, there's a lot of great content that came out of this survey we're hoping to take advantage of. So I encourage everyone to take a few minutes, read through the PR, it's linked in the notes as well as um, displayed here, and comment on the issue with anything that you think might provide value as next steps or how we can provide a, a meaningful and significant update to the paper. Smaller changes are not not usually an issue, we can make them on the fly, but if it's a larger scale change, we'd like to actually put some more effort around them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So we have a brief summary and some anecdotal feedback. Uh, I think the summary probably is self-explanatory if we go through the graphs one by one. So I will start with this one. So the idea was to get the idea about who are responding to the questionnaire or the survey. And it seems like fairly uh, equal distribution among uh, people who are engineers, architects, and then developers. And there were a few who were VP or engineering leadership or CSU who responded. In terms of uh, people who have worked, seems like three to five years uh, had a uh, greater majority of people who, who were part of the respondents. Uh, five plus years was interesting because cloud native as a whole became really popular. 
about six seven years ago so so then that that was interesting to me and what probably we is a good reflection of how we are sharing the survey or the white paper is that the beginners are not getting the links and the communication that we are sending so this can be seen by maybe people who are new to the community not being able to participate in the survey or being the least um, quite significantly at that uh, another thing we found was we definitely missed out on the options in the survey here where there were a lot of people who selected other instead of the four things that we had pointed out and some of the examples that people put in other uh, box was in insurance company in uh, tech company in uh, silicon valley uh, and so, some some other uh, interesting uh, categories so probably if we continue the survey next time we'll have better set of options this one was very interesting and i'll tie this back to another question after this uh, so vulnerability management and secrets management was the most uh, selected answer and instead of what i thought would be the most selected which is supply chain security I, and the only way i could think of why that would be the case is probably because we are spending so much time effort and communication on supply chain security people are maybe thinking that oh they they are already doing a good job we have we know enough but maybe we are not doing enough on these two things so that's probably the reason i could think of why these results are the way they are also pushkar it could be app devs perspective right yeah dev i'm just concerned about vulnerabilities and secrets management so. that's true yeah yeah that's true i guess that the, this kind of first question ties with this one uh this one was uh, also not surprising for me uh, where the most number of people responded would prefer not to disclose uh, even though the survey was anonymous for, for people who were not following earlier uh, and then the other ones after that were vulnerability exploited or cryptocurrency miners which is fairly well known by now uh, and ransomware was there even though maybe we missed the timing probably because ransomware have grown in number and uh, prevalence quite uh, quite more than when the survey was released so probably this number may have been higher it it also maybe means that in cloud native environments ransomware impact has been lesser compared to other environments so the next one was uh, cloud native security skills so the, basically the answer was we want everything uh and uh, which is which is hard to do and it it only tells us that there is, cannot be one single person who is responsible for cloud native security in your company there has to be a team which which makes sense and maybe each of them can be responsible for all of these options the other one was which of the tools you currently use so this ties back to the other question where people were saying we need vulnerability management uh, and we are worried about that the most at the same time they are also saying that we use image scanning more than any other control that we have so what probably that means is people are doing a scan but they are not able to action on it or not able to make use of the results and as a result of that maybe the vulnerabilities are detected but they remain unmitigated so that's something that maybe as a community we can help out on next one was uh, how much of the white paper you have read uh, which was probably the question one question i was very interested in and it looks like there were people who did not know about the paper the most and or have read very little because of the size and then there were few people who have read fairly uh, almost 100% of the paper what also made sense is when people said na because some people basically were saying like what white paper we have not even heard about that and that ties to the next question where we asked how did you find out about the white paper and the highest number of answers we got was i found out about the white paper through this survey which which means that we are not communicating it as well as we communicated the survey and we need to really assess like what is the best way to reach out to people and the next one was the blogs and the social medias uh, which seems like was 
thirty plus percent, which means they are working, but we need to do more. And then the last one was, how would you like the cloud native security? What would you like the cloud native security to focus on? So it seemed like the number one, which is almost, I would say 86% is secure by default or secure defaults in the projects. So what that also means is people don't want to spend time on security and they expect security to be part of the project rather than something that they would have to buy or bolt in. Uh, and then reference guide and automated tooling were next, which makes sense and also seems like uh, something that we are helping a bit through different white papers of serverless supply chain and uh, cloud native security. Uh, so these were 10 questions and there was some very interesting anecdotal feedback, mostly by one single respondent. So I would take it with a grain of salt because that particular user could be, respondent could be very opinionated. But uh, I want to pause here and hear thoughts and questions and comments from everyone. So Pushkar, on the last question, you had secure defaults. What does that mean? Like published default configurations? I mean, every deployment is different, right? And platform is different too. I'm guessing it's something like CIS benchmarks, maybe. Uh, also, maybe taking the secure option by default. So yeah. like when you deploy it out of the box, if you don't change anything, it's the secure version. Yeah, um, exactly. That's what I understood as well. Yeah, so this is a big conflict with the um, many of the projects want easy development by default. Mm -hmm. And so that's in conflict with people who are like, yeah, but don't give me a bucket of bits. Like as a developer, I would rather have... Um, we have default security for this scenario and I can figure out whether my scenario, how it differs from that scenario rather than what is typically presented to me, which is everything's different, you decide. And I'm like, I don't know your product. Do, must I really learn the definition of every single field? There's gotta be other people like me, right? Give me something and I can do diffs from that rather than making me learn every single thing in your product just to make it secure. Yeah, it, I think. Is it also possible that maybe this means the folks are looking for something that is somewhat automated, meaning, you know, they don't need to configure, they don't need to find out, but the security uh, solution is such that it will adapt itself to the environment that it has been deployed on, on that project and it comes natively with any uh, product that people are trying to sell under the cloud environment. Is that, is that any, is that a kind of sentiment might be reflected there? Anybody has any opinion? That's possible, but that's a more um, sophisticated capability, right? So that, that requires yes. a project to be able to understand its surroundings. So that'd be great if you could do it. Exactly. But um, like the examples I usually come back to is like, if you're dealing with TLS, well, TLS or, or encryption, the default um, uh, 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 algorithms which are selected should be secure, right? I shouldn't have to go and figure out, okay, what's the best one to use in 2021? It's whatever tool I'm using should be able to tell me that's what that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So in the interest of time, I think that this is something that we should schedule another meeting to talk through a little bit more about like secure defaults and what does that mean to us and what kinds of things that we could potentially look at. There's a lot of opinions in this space. There's a lot of evidence about what does and doesn't work. And it kind of marries up a, um, more with what our, use, what our users are expecting and the different roles and personas that they take on. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree that that will really help because I'm sure all of us have gone through this problem where somebody is asking for security for somebody asking for better user experience. So definitely worth the breaking out for a separate meeting. Oh, one thing I wanted to pitch the chairs and get their feedback was, is this worth sharing with uh, TOC in one of their meetings? Because maybe one way when they choose sandbox projects, as an example, were maybe they could think about if they have a choice which is equal, but one is more security conscious or has more secure defaults, is that something they would pick or maybe 
the just for general visibility perspective also it might be helpful what do you think yeah i i, th- I think that that probably is not so much on the sandbox side maybe on the like graduation there can be mm. a bit more emphasis on that um but it seems like they will come back to us for that recommendation as well so it could be part of the maybe uh could be better be part of like the joint review to kind of have that as like a a, a factor to chime in on i see yeah. so uh, if i understand that is is there some kind of a joint review that happens between doc and this uh, attack i may be missing well, some context well this this would be usually when a project goes up for incubation or graduation uh, oh. there is a recommendation that's asked from the tag um and for us it comes as a security recommendation and these usually are usually a result of the security assessments that we do right okay um yeah but uh, like Emily mentioned in the chat, we do have a liaison meeting and we have the, the updates to the TLC. So I think this is definitely something that that we should share with them at one of our next TLC updates. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, can, can you create a issue on the discussion of security defaults? And maybe we can, we can pick up the discussion another time or we can have someone that would like to present on that topic and then we can have a discussion around that. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Awesome, thanks, Fushka. Cool. Um, we don't have that much time left, so go to the last two topics are pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, the first one is on the triage team. So, so we saw a little bit about the new changes with the triage um, uh, in this meeting. So what we are trying to form is uh, we're trying to find a triage lead. Uh, they can lead the triage efforts. Uh, we looked, we are having triage meetings every once every two weeks for now. For now, they are in-person meetings. Uh, and then we will figure out a better way so that you know those that may not be able to get to the meetings can also participate. Um, but if not, the triage, we are looking to form a triage team. We're looking for triage leads. Um, that is an issue number, which is um, 665. The piece in the chat here. Yes, Emily. Yeah, like Emily said, this one right after this. Uh, so you want to drop by? Um, I will also put the, I will put the, the link to the Google Meet in, or the Zoom link in the Slack channel tech security triage. So if you're interested, please join this Slack channel as well. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna go through usually at these meetings is you know, initially to, to get everyone on the same page to talk a bit about how we are triaging things, how the group kind of identifies things to work on, how we identify things that, um, like whether we should maybe um, merge certain issues together or we should redirect certain issues and you know which parties we should talk to and getting people together so that's all part of the triage process so if this is something that's interesting to you um please uh, put a note in the the issue as well as join the um the tech security um triage slack channel and i'll put a link in there right after this um okay if not i think the last the last agenda item we have is from ratna you want to take the floor i have a couple of things um brandon um <laughs> the first one is um let me open my yeah the first one is the serverless security white paper so um this is call for action for everyone um, and request uh, if you're interested please tag yourself to the issue i know we had some hiccups in setting up an initial meeting because our time zones. Uh, some of our project leads are unable to attend the US time zones. But um, Andrew is working on setting up a brand new kickoff meeting. So if you're interested, please, please um, send your contact information to them on the serverless uh, security Slack channel. Um, right now, as we see, we have only two volunteers to work on it. So help needed, uh, please participate and uh, provide your information so we can invite you to the discussions. 
Uh, second one is chaos engineering update. Um, so the working group has started actively working on the white paper. We had an initial meeting. There are a number of tags participating in that. Uh, for now, I am attending those meetings and contributing. So if anyone from this team is interested in participating, please tag yourself to the issue and I can forward um, the Slack channel information as well as uh, the project team's uh, white paper where you can start contributing to that as well. Any interest? You can ping me also directly and I'll help you connect with the right resources there. Yeah, if you can put in the, the issue number after the meeting as well, um, that, would, that would be helpful. Sure, I will. Um, and in the issue itself, I've provided the Slack channel there as well. So I'm happy to do that, Brandon. And the last one is the, it's a new initiative uh, about attack matrix for cloud native technologies. I know MITRE has come out with one, Microsoft has come out with one. Um, just wanted to know if we need to do any work here or if there's any interest in progressing that to like kill chain uh, identification. And, you know, I know we have controls, right? Nobody puts all the control layered controls that we have um, recommended, but based on the attack scenarios, if we can figure out if you have A, B or C controls, then you can kill this attack completely and you are protected. Um, I don't know if it makes sense, but this was just an idea and looking for feedback here from everyone, how we can progress on this journey to improve guidance on the attack surface management. Um, this is more for our detection and response teams, right? Uh, so that they can leverage this as well as to where to go look. Today's soft teams are challenged as to how they can manage the attack surface in a cloud native world. Um, and the goal is to provide them more guidance and information on this is where you start looking and this is how you kill these type of attacks. And this, this, these are the data points you need to gather or correlate to even identify these attacks. Silence. Um, Mark, is this something I know? I know, Mark, you, you've talked a little bit about the. the I was over the book, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, we're talking about the the, the MITRE threat, threat matrix and stuff like that. I was yeah, wondering no, whether you had another meeting on that. Okay, those were the three issues I wanted to talk about. Um, I mean, again, we want to do work that everybody's interested in. Um, if we don't have any interest, then we obviously can prioritize it accordingly in our roadmap. Yeah, let's, let's put the issues. If you can uh, put them in the Google Doc, that'll be helpful. Uh, and then also let's, let's put uh, these out in the tag security channel as well so that people get visibility that may not necessarily be able to make it for the meeting. Sounds good. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. So we have three minutes left. Um, any last words for anyone? Last words. Oh, jokes. <laughs> um, just that um, I wanted to draw your attention to the chat. Um, there was a question about uh, when we're actually doing, like, so we, we started last quarter doing a quarterly roadmap meeting. It's on the planned agenda, planned meetings list, but without a date. Does that mean that the next working meeting will be a roadmap discussion? Yes, it's Two July 28th. Mm -hmm. All right. I expect to see everybody there. Awesome. Thanks for the update. Thank you, everyone. Oh. I got sidetracked. July 28th, where? Right here. Right here. Right in this here. Same time, space. same channel. <laughs> it's my birthday that day. So I'm going to be having some cake instead. No, uh, we're going to celebrate oh, your the birthday. The roadmap would be your birthday present. Yeah. Though. Happy birthday, okay. Andres. We're reviewing the roadmap. Get excited. <laughs> yeah, well, let me add the agenda item for a birthday song right now. So we don't forget. <laughs> are you going to, are you going to sing me a song, Brandon? You're going to grab maybe. Brandon? Maybe. If you make it to the meeting, maybe. <laughs> We can have a group as singing on Zoom is really awful, but. <laughs>
Maybe somebody <laughs> I, with a great voice will volunteer. Hey, the, the upload to YouTube is supposed to happen automatically now. I know there's some kinks with that. But... <laughs> All right. Awesome. Good okay. to see everyone. Bye. Thank you. Next week. Have a great day. We, we, have, a, we have a presentation Thanks, next week, uh, by the way. Um, so that will be next week's meeting. We have a presentation on a new project. Um, more details will be posted on the channel. Cool. That's good. Right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.